three long years ago, we dove into a step-by-step -step tutorial for constructing this humble $300 home office computer. Well, today we're gonna kick things up a notch. I'm gonna walk you through every detail of supercharging this same PC to deliver performance that isn't just gonna be a bit better, but rather it's going to skyrocket to such an extent it'll keep you covered for the rest of the decade. So buckle up guys, it's upgrade time. Hey guys, CJ from Elevated Systems. Let's cast our minds back to March of 2020. It shouldn't be hard. It's the month when the world transformed and we all started spending significantly more time at home, whether we wanted to or not. That's when I published a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide for building this simple but highly effective home office PC. Given the global situation and the countless individuals now working and studying from home, the video did remarkably well, despite having fewer than a thousand subscribers and my channel not even being monetized at the time, it garnered over 10,000 views in the first few weeks. According to my affiliate link statistics, many people actually purchased the components and built the system, which is awesome. I hope this video reaches many of you who did because today I'm going to demonstrate how to upgrade this PC. We'll be transforming it from a bare bones entry level home office PC to an increasingly powerful home office machine and eventually into a, an exceptionally capable desktop workstation based on your available budgets. And even if you didn't build this exact PC, you should still find the information I share today helpful for upgrading most pre-built home office desktops. Let's get started. Now, as a refresher, this is a very simple desktop PC with an AMD Athlon 3000G two core four thread CPU with integrated Vega 3 graphics. It has eight gigabytes of RAM in a single stick and 256 gigabyte 2.5 inch SSD. The motherboard's a gigabyte B450 micro ATX and it's powered by a 450 watt EVGA power supply. The entire system is housed in a simple Rosewill desktop case. We're gonna start with simple drop-in upgrades, such as increasing our memory capacity and adding a much faster NVMe SSD. We'll also explore how to upgrade the processor to a more powerful Ryzen APU, or by choosing from any of the first four generations of Ryzen CPUs. Finally, I'll show you how to install a dedicated graphics card in the system. The best part is that you can choose any combination of these upgrades based on your budget. Before we dive into upgrading any hardware components in the system, we first need to tackle the system BIOS. Think of it as laying the groundwork. To install a newer, more exciting CPU than what our motherboard is familiar with, we need to update the motherboard's firmware. Now, if you're not planning on upgrading the CPU, don't run off just yet. Updating the BIOS is still beneficial. It's a bit like getting a regular checkup. It helps iron out any identified bugs, enhances hardware compatibility, and patches up any pesky security vulnerabilities. This is especially vital given the security risk that has been identified with this and other Gigabyte motherboards recently. Doing this is simple. Hop over to the motherboard's product website, click on support, then shimmy on down to downloads and find BIOS. There you'll find the latest BIOS version, for instance, version F64D, which debuted on June 1st, 2023. Just click the download link. Once completed, extract the BIOS file to a thumb drive. Now, here's a word to the wise. Before you update the BIOS, do ensure that your PC is connected to an uninterruptible power supply. This is crucial because a power loss during the BIOS update could be a disaster turning our motherboard into an expensive brick. If you have full confidence in your home's power delivery, then just make sure there are no potential hazards like your dog running amok. With the thumb drive inserted, restart the computer and keep hitting the delete key until you boot into the BIOS. If you find yourself in the easy mode screen, press F2 to switch to advanced mode, then navigate to QFlash, hit enter, click on update BIOS, select the thumb drive and then choose the BIOS file, hit next. Once the file is verified, click start. It's a waiting game now until the process completes. Once done, the system will restart. You can power down and then we're set up for those enticing hardware upgrades. All right, 
Let's kick things off with a memory upgrade. When I first built this thing, to save some cash, I popped in a single 8GB stick of DDR4 memory. In a perfect world, if you got a single 8GB stick for this PC, you just buy a second identical one and pop it into slot 1. Just like that. You've doubled your memory, which means more room for multitasking, and that second channel of memory bandwidth will give things a bit more pep. But here's the kicker. After a while, you might not find an exact match for your RAM. The good news is, over the past three years, the price of DDR4 has taken a dive. These days, we can find 16 gigabyte kits of DDR4 3200 memory cheaper than what eight gigs cost back then, and 32 gigabyte kits for less than 50 bucks. So I'm going with this 32 gig T-Force kit today. All it takes is unlocking the clips and pulling out the old sticks. Now, you just gotta line up the notch on the new RAM and press the RAM into place until the tabs click into DIMMs A2 and B2. If you're sticking with the Athlon 3000G, 16 gigs of RAM is plenty because it's just a four core CPU. My general rule of thumb is two gigs of memory per CPU thread and round up to the next kit size. RAM usually doubles in capacity, four gigs, eight, 16, 32, 64, and so on. Just a heads up, while I've never run into trouble using non-matched yet identical sticks of RAM on the B450 or AM4 platform, AMD isn't a fan of mismatched RAM that sticks of different sizes and speeds. You're always better off buying matched memory kits for this platform. All right, let's talk about some storage. When we first put together this rig, we slipped in a modest 256 gigabyte, 2.5 inch SSD. But after about three years, it's likely that drive is filling up. The simplest solution for extra storage is just adding another 2.5 inch SSD. Just snatch another SATA cable from your motherboard box, find an open SATA port, and hook it up. Slot your new SSD right next to the old one. Today, I'm using a two terabyte SAN disk. Connect the power and data cable, and you've got another storage drive you can shuffle your files to and even install new programs there. You want to ramp up your system and program speeds? Consider stepping up to an M.2 NVMe SSD. My pick for today is a 500 gigabyte Crucial P3. This one's a Gen 3 SSD, which is what this board is designed for. A Gen 4 SSD wouldn't be any better for this build. To install it, you're looking for the M2 slot situated between the CPU and the first PCIe lane. Take out the fastening screw. If it's not on the board already, you'll find it in the motherboard box. Now, keeping the label facing up, slide the pin side of the SSD into the M.2 slot at about a 45 degree angle. Press down the SSD to the standoff and secure it with the screw. Once you've installed your NVMe SSD, you want to use it as your boot drive where your operating system will live. I've made a few videos of cloning your Windows boot drive to a new SSD, and I'll link those below, but my advice is back up your files and data and install a fresh version of Windows onto the NVMe. After that, you can reformat the old SSD and repurpose it as a storage drive. All right, let's get to the heart of the system and chat about CPU upgrades. Due to AMD's impressive six-year commitment to the AM4 socket, we've got more than 100 Ryzen CPUs to pick from, ranging from the 1000s to the 5000 series. Coming from the Athlon, practically 97% of them will be upgrades. If you're specifically looking for an APU drop-in upgrade, you'll have to select one of the Ryzen G series CPUs with integrated graphics. We've got APUs with 2, 4, 6, and 8 cores, starting from the 2200G and going up to the 5700G. Based on price and availability, I'd suggest the Ryzen 5 5600G. It's a 6-core, 12-thread CPU with Vega 7 graphics. It's one of the latest Ryzen APUs. It's readily available, won't break the bank, and comes with a solid stock cooler. If you're thinking about adding a dedicated graphics card to your setup, 
like I will be today, your CPU options are practically limitless. However, considering the motherboard and power supply, I'd recommend picking one of the Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5 CPUs with eight cores or fewer. These CPUs demand less power and will work wonderfully with the setup. In most cases, the stock coolers that come with them are more than sufficient. For today's upgrade, I'm choosing the six core Ryzen 5 5500. It's a great CPU for an office PC and is currently priced at around 80 bucks. If you're aiming to boost your rig's gaming capabilities and have an extra 60 bucks to spend, you might consider the powerful Ryzen 5 5600X. Regardless of the Ryzen CPU you choose, Installation exactly the same across the board. First, we need to remove the old CPU. Start by unclipping the small Athlon cooler. Once the clips are freed from the tabs, give the cooler a few twists until it detaches from the CPU. Pro tip, to easily loosen the cooler from the thermal paste, run your PC for a few minutes to warm up the CPU, then power it off. After removing the cooler, clean the old CPU with some isopropyl alcohol. Next, lift the locking arm and take the CPU out from the socket. We're almost ready for our upgrade, but the stock Wraith cooler demands the removal of the stock brackets. So first, make sure the back panel is taken off of your case so you can get to the AM4 backplate. Then unscrew the two screws holding each of the brackets and take the brackets off. With those out of the way, pop in the new CPU Make sure the arrow on the bottom left corner of the CPU aligns with the arrow on the socket. Lower the arm to secure the CPU. The Wraith Stealth and Taller Spire Cooler come with thermal compound already applied and both are installed in the same way. Hold the back place in place with the AMD logo facing away from the dim slots. Align the four screws on the cooler with the back plate and screw the cooler down a bit at a time in a star pattern to ensure it's installed evenly. Lastly, plug the CPU fan into the CPU fan header, lining up the slot on the cable with the tab on the header. If you opt for a Ryzen 7 CPU or even the 5600X, the stock cooler is adequate but may spin up loudly to cool the CPU effectively. Therefore, a more capable aftermarket cooler could be a better choice. However, with only about 146 or 147 millimeters of clearance in the case, not all coolers will fit. While there are several options to choose from, they can be an investment with prices ranging between $60 and $100. There are more affordable low profile coolers, but in my experience, they're often as loud if not louder than the AMD stock cooler. One of the most capable and quiet options is the Noctua NH-D12L. With a height of 45 millimeters, it maxes out the case's capacity, but it's straightforward to install and can cool virtually any Ryzen CPU quietly. However, at a price point of nearly $90, it might be more cost effective to consider a case upgrade to accommodate a larger and more affordable cooler. I'll leave some links for coolers that fit this case and suggestions for case upgrades in the description below, but in most cases, the low profile AMD stock cooler should suffice. Let's move on to the final upgrade and introduce some dedicated graphics power to this PC. However, before installing our new graphics card, we should enhance the case's airflow by adding a 120 millimeter fan to the front. Firstly, we need to add a fan splitter cable to the only case fan header on our motherboard. This will allow us to share the connection with the rear fan. After the cable is connected and routed, I'll remove the front panel and secure the fan to the front of the case. The front panel has small slits that will enable the fan to draw in some fresh air, but primarily the fan's role is to recirculate air within the case, supplying the graphics card and assisting in spelling warm air from the case. This improved air circulation lowered temperatures by four to five degrees during my tests. The graphics card I've selected is the Intel Arc A750. Despite a bit of a shaky start in gaming performance, my tests indicate that it's one of the standout options for productivity and content creation given its $200 price tag. If you're interested in beefing up your photo or video editing abilities, or if you want to dive into any three-dimensional design or CAD program, this card makes a strong pick. Plus, with Intel's driver improvements, it's also a competent gaming card, should that pique your interest. As for installing this or any other graphics card, you want to locate the PCIe power cable first. We'll also need to ensure the SSD and SATA cables 
are relocated to accommodate this car. After that, go ahead and remove the PCIe slot cover plate from the back of the case and carefully snap off the PCIe covers from the second and third expansion slot. Now, simply align the card with the first PCI slot and push it into position, securing it to the case with a pair of case screws. Our 450 watt power supply only provides one PCI power cable with two six plus two connectors. First, plug the eight pin connector into the card's corresponding slot, then plug the six pin daisy chain connector into the card's six pin slot. This setup is totally fine for this particular card. The single PCIe with its two connections can deliver up to 300 watts or 262 watts in its current eight plus six pin configuration. The ARC A750 operates at a base power of 190 watts with a max configurable power up to 228 watts, so we have plenty of room to spare. That said, you can go ahead and add nearly any graphics card that'll fit in this case, but make sure it doesn't exceed 300 watts or you'll need to upgrade your power supply. Just a heads up, if you're aiming for a total system power of over 650 watts, it's worth considering a higher end motherboard upgrade. Finally, we need to return to our BIOS to ensure we're fully utilizing the new hardware. Reconnect your computer remembering to use the display or HDMI port of the graphics card if you made that upgrade and boot into the system BIOS. In the first menu under advanced memory settings, ensure the extreme memory profile is selected to access the full RAM speeds. Next, if you're reinstalling Windows, disable CSM support in the BIOS menu. You can skip the step if you're maintaining your current Windows installation and had originally installed it with CSM enabled. Finally, in the peripherals menu, enable above 4G decoding and resize bar support. In the AMD overclocking menu, ensure that Precision Boost Overdrive is set to auto. This will enable PBO as long as the system detects it can be done safely. That's it, save settings and reboot. And we've wrapped up our PC overhaul, transforming it from an entry level everyday computer to a powerhouse workstation. This desktop now has the prowess to manage any task you throw at it. Productivity, coding, content creation, professional software, you name it. Not to mention when it's time to unwind, it can handle the most demanding AAA games with ease. The best part, you don't have to follow our exact path or even go all in at once. We're talking about a machine we built more than three years ago. You could begin with minor adjustments, maybe a memory or storage boost, and then gradually introduce more components. It's all about figuring out which updates are going to make the biggest difference for you as your budget allows. As always, you'll find the links to all the components we've used, alternate options, and my reviews of these products down in the description below. If there's something you're curious about, don't hesitate to drop a comment. And if you've been following along and are now upgrading your own system, I'm really excited to hear from you. Let us know what upgrades you're installing and why you've chosen them. And as usual, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to keep up with the action. And I'll see you in the next one.